Hello everybody, Hebro77 here for Hebro's Toy Reviews and today we'll be reviewing Super 7 Major Blood. Now I've had very many variants of Major Blood. I've had the 25th Anniversary G.I. Joe vs. Cobra 2-Packer. Maybe it was a 6-pack, I don't remember. But I never actually had his vintage figure. But today we're going to be talking about the Super 7 Reaction action figure major blood so stick around and don't be a dud because Hebro's Toy Reviews is coming up next. Hebro 77 here and welcome to a brand new YouTube channel. This is Hebro's Toy Reviews. But this is the 1983 Jump Jetpack. They I just broke his crotch. What do you think about her? I was, I was, um, I was playing tennis with, 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 uh, with, uh, with, uh, Super. Yeah. some games. This is the owner of Daniel. Daniel. Uh, ah. Major. An explosive charge was placed in the mine for an occasion just like this. Welcome to Hebro's Toy Reviews, and we have Major Blood from Super 7 Reaction Action Figure. And Major Blood, of course, has been a big foe in G.I. Joe lore. You might even say he is number three next to Destro in the lead of command. Um, well, maybe number four if you include the Baroness. But Major Blood has been in many of the G.I. Joe cartoons, including, well, you may have seen this one. Commander! Major Blood! Start the attack! Get Senator Romero's and General Gott! They'll make mighty good hostages for Cobra! I, again, do not have the vintage figure for this guy. I do have the Major Blood, I think, that came in a six-pack with the Baroness and I think Cobra Commander and a Cobra Trooper. I can't be sure about that, but this guy is pretty dang awesome. He looks like he could be most definitely a Bond villain, or really any villain for that matter. He's got the villainous eye patch and the villainous mustache. He's very villainy, so to speak. So Major Blood comes to us in one of these arm thingies. I don't know what that is. In a bulletproof vest. With, of course, the eye patch. And the Cobra dress uniform underneath or something. Not dress uniform. The Cobra Trooper's uniform underneath his clothing. He's in all brown clothes. Which is pretty plain, but it fits Major Blood for who he is and what he does. Um, the, the bulletproof vest is gray along with some gray armor on his left arm. He has gray boots. He is as plain as plain could be. And the man speaks with a British accent, which makes things even more better for a villain. So, there you go. And his card art on here is just absolutely amazing. I think Super 7 recaptured the original card art without actually just copy and pasting the card art. So now we've seen the major blood and what's inside the package. Let's take a look at the back side of the package. Our cells reveal nothing new from what we have seen before, although they do say coming soon on the back. This is one of the many. And this is one of the snake eyes. I do intend to add to my collection sooner or later. I've seen him many times. I picked him up once or twice, but was never able to purchase him. So now we move down to his file card here. And as you can see from the file card, it just simply says mercenary. Although a mercenary applies that he is just part-time and doesn't necessarily work for Cobra, but I was always under the impression that he was a major in the Cobra Army. 
hence the name Major Blood. So to me, Mercenary really doesn't um, doesn't fit well. Seems like he is a Cobra has always been a Cobra Trooper, moved up to Major, moved up through the ranks. So yeah, and I don't like that term mercenary. As you can see here, they're using a cartoon picture of Major Blood, and it appears to be in one of the ones where he's in the um, Cobra Rattler, because you can clearly see the back of the the jet, the seat for the jet there, and he's got the microphone piece. So I'm thinking they took this where he was in a Cobra Rattler at one time. With all that being said, let's get into the file card itself. Code name, Major Blood. File name, Blood. Um, Sabbath. What? S Sebastian. Sebastian Blood. So, really for the first and probably only time in G.I. Joe history, we have a full name of a Cobra, the enemy, uh, Cobra, the enemy guy. Uh, this is a very rare occasion that we have for these uh, these action figures. And even all the way back into the vintage line, we never got their full names. So, this is kind of cool. So, we got the... So, his name is Sebastian. That's kind of interesting. So, primary military specialty terrorist. <laughs> well, of course. Secondary military specialty weapons and tactics. Birthplace, Sydney, Australia. Ah, he's Australian. So he's actually speaking with an Australian accent and not an English accent, as I had originally said. Blood received initial military training in the Australian Special Air Service, later joined the French Foreign Legion, worked as a military advisor in a number of countries, and is currently wanted for crimes in Rhode Island and Libya. Huh. Interesting. Proficient with every form of infantry weapon and current use. Blood has a tactical mind like a steel trap. Qualified experts. All NATO and Warsaw packed small arms. Major Blood writes poetry badly. When you're feeling low and woozy, woozy, slap a fresh clip into your oozy. Assume the proper firing stance and make sure the suckers jump and dance from the Attica Gazette. Attica Gazette. Okay, so apparently one of his poems was published. Alright. So he's kind of stealing Roadblock's uh, thing there. Alright, well, we'll just go with that. So, you know, that's a little bit more than what I've ever known about Major Blood. And um, it's cool they gave him a first name. And we know now it's Sebastian. So maybe he likes to... Uh, you know, do dances under the sea or something like that, to that effect. Anyway, that concludes my review on Major Blood. What do I think of him as a figure? Well, he's top tier, definitely. And uh, you would be a fool if you didn't add him to your Super 7 G.I. Joe collection. Well, that does it for this review. And what can I say that hasn't already been said about Major Blood except, well... He would make a pretty good Bond villain in any movie. I mean, he's got the eye patch. And, you know, he's got the foreign accent. Not quite sure what accent he does. I guess it's British. But a lot of the bad guys in the G.I. Joe cartoon do British accents. The Dreadnoughts, Major Blood, uh, Dr. Mindbender, sort of, I guess. Doing some kind of accent. And Dr. Mindbender would make a good villain in a James Bond movie as well. As he did um, make a pretty good villain in the Spy Who Worked Me G.I. Joe episode from the 80s. Well, that does it for this review. I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to click a like and subscribe. 
for more videos. And until next time, just remember, knowing isn't just half the battle, it's the whole damn war.